All right. So today we're going to learn how to use an API. Um, so maybe you're using doing web development, you're learning how to code, and you built some static sites, meaning you built some sites that rely on HTML and CSS. And that's cool. They might look really nice, but you're thinking, well, what if you wanted to add some interaction there? What if you wanted to use somebody else's data? What if you wanted to, you know, look at uh, Twitter data or Instagram data or all, all this great data that's out there that's for the taking, right? Well, you can do that and you can do that through APIs. Now, APIs were one of my favorite things and one of the most difficult things I think I learned when I was first learning how to code. And I remember being kind of daunted by it, not really understanding how they worked. So I thought I'd make this video to hopefully help you out and to make the sites you're building a lot more cool, a lot more interactive, a lot more fun. So here we go. So what I like to do is if I'm looking for an API, you know, there's tons of them out there. It's almost overwhelming how many there are out there. But there's a little fun, there's a little funny sites like this, like API list.fun. So I went on here and I chose lyrics. I love music. I thought, hey, this sounds like a good choice. So we're going to use a lyrics API. But before we get into using it and the nitty gritty of how we're actually going to make this work, first of all, we should probably go over what is an API. Well, I'll tell you. So an API is called, is stands for application programming interface. And that's a big fancy word for I'm going to use the tools and data that you have on your site, on my site. So maybe you've used the Google Maps API, which is a really common one for people that are just, that are just beginning out and learning how to use APIs. That one uh, essentially lets you use Google's Maps in your own app without really having to write any of your code, right? I mean, you wouldn't want to recreate Google Maps. I mean, they've had thousands of engineers and guys driving cars for, I don't know, decades to make that thing work. So you don't want to do that, right? You want to just use their map. That's all you want. It was a pretty little map. You don't want to drive around in cars and take pictures of people unsuspecting in their driveways and walking out in the streets. So that's why we use APIs. We stand on the shoulders of people that have done way more work than us. Um, but the typical way you use an API is not like Google Maps. It's more through URLs. So let's take a look at this um, API here. So all APIs have documentation. If they don't have documentation, walk away because it's not worth it. You're going to frustrate yourself. You're not going to get anywhere. It's no point. So I use a tool called Postman when I want to check out an API because I don't believe the documentation. Sometimes the documentation is wrong. Sometimes the API has been broken. And then, you know, next thing you know, you're writing all this code, trying to get the API to work, going to discover, oh, no, it hasn't worked for two years. And here you are trying to figure it out. We don't want to do that. So let's check out Postman. Postman's a great little tool you can use. In fact, like I feel like every company I've been at, all the front-end developers, full-stack developers, Back, back in develop, they all use it. It's uh, one of those things you probably won't learn in a boot camp, but it's really useful. And it's kind of those un unspoken expectations when you walk into a job that say, oh, well, so what do you use? And they expect that you'll probably say Postman, right? So let's learn how to use it. So Postman's free, download it. You put in a URL like this, you pick what type of request this is. In this case, this is a GET request. There are different types of requests. There's GET, POST, PUT, patch and delete and i'm going to use instagram as an example for kind of how these verbs work so a get request kind of does what it sounds like it gets you um some data from an endpoint right um so in this case this one we're going to do it's a get request we're going to press send let's see what happens cross my fingers ah bam look at that we got some nice json data json meaning javascript object notation just a object right javascript object which you're probably used to seeing and it gives us some lyrics which is cool so this is kind of a, this could be actually a really cool little way we could interact with this api we could build a site maybe where people put in an artist and the name of a song they want to listen to or, or they want the lyrics to and we could return it to them so that's a get request a post request is when you want to let's say on instagram you want to post something so you might post a picture so when you first go on instagram maybe you're gonna get all the user feed, all the different photos and junk that you're looking at. A post is when you wanna post something, right? You post a picture with some funny comment. Put request is you want to maybe update something that you've uh, added there. And so maybe you add like a comment or something under your picture or a caption or something, something silly under there. And then you get really embarrassed later and you say, oh no, why did I do that? That was horrible, why did I put that out there? And you wanna delete it and you delete it. So you delete that from their server. and APIs usually expose a few different types of different actions you can take, get, post, put, patch, and delete. The most common ones you're going to run into are get and post. 
for the purposes of this little demonstration, we're going to use a get one. And also these are just easier. Now, if you're, if you're trying to do a post request, I'm just going to show you a really quick example of how these would go. So post request, usually you'll have a body. The body will be some JSON that you'll be sending typically. And you'll send some JSON like this. You'll put in whatever parameters you're supposed to put in. So maybe if this was a post type of request, we might put in like artist. We put like cold play or whatever. And then we'd send that in a post request. And the post request would contain some information in the body that the server would use on the API side to determine what to send us. But that's not the case with us. We got a nice easy one to get request. We see that it works. I'm happy with that. Seems legit to me. Let's start coding. So I have a really ugly little HTML page here. I'm using Visual Studio Code. You can use Sublime. You can use Atom. You can use whatever things. I will say that Visual Studio Code is, in my opinion, a little better. Um, it's free. It's kind of becoming the new industry standard. So if you're new to web development and you're wondering which text editor to use, I strongly suggest using this one, uh, especially if you're in a place like the Bay Area, California, where people are typically think more on the cutting edge of, of stuff. Uh, I just feel like every office you go to in San Francisco, like 75% of the developers are using this. So why not learn to use it? Uh, and we're gonna have an app.js file. So we've included that and we're gonna need to use jQuery also for this. So let's go ahead and grab jQuery. And let's do that by looking up jQuery, if I can spell it, jQuery CDN. What is a CDN? I'm glad you asked. It's a content delivery network. What does that mean? Glad you also asked that. Uh, content delivery network is a set of servers that are out there um, that that deliver content, right? So they're waiting for you. So maybe you have uh, something like jQuery, which is widely used, and you can either download the whole file and include it in your project, or you can just make a request to the CDN, a bunch of these servers that are just sitting around, and they all have the same copy of jQuery on them, and you can make a request, and it'll just transfer that to you. So they're nice because they're stable, um, they're safe, they don't require you to have a bunch of code that you're now keeping on your end. You just, it's pretty lightweight, you just make the request and bam, you got it. So we're gonna get jQuery, we're gonna just get, you know, it doesn't really matter which one you get, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get minified, why not? Um, I'm going to include it in here. And I'm gonna include it before my app.js, that's important because, well, this is a dependency app.js is going to depend on jQuery being loaded because we're going to use jQuery to make an Ajax request. So what is Ajax? Ajax, not that cleaning stuff you use. That is not it. It's asynchronous JavaScript and XML, hence the name. That's the acronym. Uh, asynchronous means that it is non-blocking. It means when your JavaScript application is doing stuff and you have an, an Ajax request in there, it's not going to wait for that Ajax request to finish for other stuff to keep going on. So we'll put like a console log, you know, high up here. And maybe you have some really important JavaScript down here that is really important for your page to run like this comment right here, console log by. And then you have this Ajax request we're gonna put in here. So we'll put dollar sign dot get. And remember get is the, um, is the verb we're using. It's the HTTP endpoint type of request that they've exposed to us. And I'm just gonna copy and paste this um, this thing here, that URL. So get, I'm going to put dot then. So then once you're finished, remember this is asynchronous. So we don't know how long this is gonna to take to run. So we're saying, hey, get me, go get this URL. Then when you're finished, whenever you're finished doing what you're doing, maybe you're taking one second, maybe you're taking two seconds, maybe you're taking five seconds. That's too long for people to wait. They cannot wait five seconds while this thing goes off, right? We don't want them to wait like that. That's why it's asynchronous, meaning that this can run and this can run while this guy is off doing his thing. It's kind of like if you're doing your 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 housework in your home and you're like, well, I want to make a pizza, do some laundry, and then I, I want to go to the park. Well, maybe making the pizza will take you, you know, 10 minutes to warm up the pizza in the oven. Maybe the laundry is going to take 45 minutes. And then going to the park, you can go to the park in between and you can hang out at the park for 30 minutes with your kids while you're waiting for the laundry to dry. Well, if you did all those things synchronously, that would take a heck of a lot more time, right? You'd be getting the pizza, then you'd do the laundry, then you'd wait for the laundry to finish, then you'd go to the park. Well, why not just go to the park while the laundry's doing its thing? That's the whole idea behind Ajax. It's saying, hey, why don't you go ahead and do this asynchronous junk that might take a while 
And while you're doing that, I'm going to do everything else I need to do. I'm not going to block. I'm not going to block you from doing stuff because you might have other important things you need to do that I don't want to hold you up on. So that is the idea behind uh, Ajax and asynchronous JavaScript. Um, okay, so let's console log the data. And to that note also that saying, hey, then is saying, hey, once you're done, then, you know, I do want that data, right? I mean, I, I didn't want to just forget about it. So, hey, then, then when you're done, give me that data. I'm going to pass a callback function. It's going to take in data as an argument, and we're going to look at the data and make sure we got something cool. So this looks good for now. So this looks decent. So let's check this out. Let's open this up. Here's my page here. I'm going to refresh. Oh, look at that. Hi, bye, see. So hi and bye happened. They didn't wait for this guy to finish. Bye happened. Even though it is below this, it happened before that other console. Like that's because it's, again, asynchronous, non-blocking. And look at that. We got some lyrics. Sweet. So this is the nice happy path, right? This is a happy path. What if somebody put in something dumb like this? They put in like, they just put some, some jerky thing in like that and try to mess with our site. I don't know why anybody would do that, but they're, they're cruel people in this world. But let's see how our site would handle it. Ooh, nothing. Ah, we got a 404 error. error. No lyrics found. But we're not console logging anything. We don't even know. We don't even know that there was an error. The only way we know that, oh, we do know there's an error there, but not from us. We don't know it because they threw an error for us. Say, hey, we didn't find that thing you typed in, you jerk. You put in some weird thing that no one knows what the hell you're talking about. So. We need to have a little more defensive programming here. We need to actually catch this error. So let's have a callback where we catch that error. Let's console.log. Let's console.log that error. And maybe maybe we can even do something on our end if we, if we see some jerk doing something like that. So let's see what happens now. Bam. Ah. So here's the error, which is an object. And we see the response text. So our status text. So let's... let's uh, Let's get the let's get let's let's just look at the status text. Yeah, status text. Console log, log e dot status text. Refresh again. Ha, not found. So now maybe we can put something on the screen if something's not found. Let's go back to the uh, the happy path. So let's put in cold cold play, I believe it was, and refresh one more time to see the data come back. Great, we have lyrics here. Cool. So we're going to make like a super ugly site real quick. We're just going to make like something really, really looking junky here. So let's put a div and put like lyrics, class of lyrics. We're just going to leave that there because this is where we're going to dump in our lyrics. So let's go to app.js and let's grab that. Let's, let's make const lyrics div equals the name of that div. And I'm going to assume you know a little bit of jQuery. I'll walk through it really a little bit, but if not, definitely use Google. That's your friend. That's another thing about web development. If something is unclear to you, there's a ton of different resources on the web. Go to Google, go on there, figure this stuff out, play around with it. That's the way you're going to learn the most. Uh, doing a paint by numbers thing isn't going to super help you out. The whole intention of this is just to get your feet wet so you can say, oh, that's how you do it. You don't want to just go off this and think that you know how to use APIs. This is just your first introduction to them. So make sure you use a few other ones that you think are interesting, ones that are hard, and um, you're gonna really get it down and it's gonna change your life as a web developer. So const lyrics.div equals, uh, this is called lyrics, and it's a class of lyrics. Okay, cool. So now we've got that stored, right? So we have that div stored. That's important because we got this cool information, but we don't have anywhere to actually put it, right? We wanna actually post the information on the page. So, and let's get the um, let's get the lyrics text, which is going to be what's returned in the data. So data returns an object with a lyrics property. So data dot lyrics is our lyrics text, and then we're just going to do this lyrics div dot append uh, lyrics text and in fact, we can even we can even do something like this. Make it even make it even better. We can do we can get the lyrics div here. We already know it exists. And then if we have an error, we can just do lyrics. Oh, we can put uh, lyrics div dot append e dot status text. I believe it was. Um, 
And we, you know, of course we want to improve on this, but I think for right now, let's see if this thing works. Uh, lyrics, blah, 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 blah. Looks like it didn't quite give us what we wanted. So let's check on that and see what's going on here real quick. The data, we can stop console logging the data, clean this up a little bit. Let's refresh the page. Bam, look at that, beautiful. We got some pretty gross text on here and it's looking not too sweet, but the point is wasn't making a really beautiful site. You can do that on your own. In fact, you should do that on your own. Why don't you go do that? But what we wanna do was be able to make some cool, make a API request, get some data and put it on the screen. So that is the basics of how you use an API. And from here, you know, you can go nuts. You can maybe, you know, right now we have a few issues right here, right? We, we can only look at Coldplay and we can only look at Adventures of a Lifetime. Well, there's a really simple way you could fix that. I'm not gonna do it here. I think this is something cool you could do on your own that will take this lesson a little further and really drive it home for you. So you could put, you know, maybe an input and another input, you know, and pit input that might be one for the artist and another one for the title. And then you can have a button maybe under it. And once the user clicks on that button, you guessed it, you make that Ajax request, you either then put up, say, hey, we couldn't find it, or you put up the text. Then you got yourself a fairly useful little app. So I hope that was useful for you. Hope you learned a lot out of that. And hopefully this gets you started on your trek to using APIs and making a site that's really a lot more interesting than just static HTML and CSS. So hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I promise I'll make videos way more often than every once every third of a decade. I had no clue people were watching these. So I will be making these a lot more often. And I really hope you enjoy these. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.